Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the ZBA hearing on today, June 8th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Um, I am Kevin Perkins, the vice chair. I'll be chairing this meeting and with me is the chairman, Mr. Cushing, um, the other member, Mr. Buckley, and the alternate member, Mr. Pratty. Um, first hearing we have tonight, I'll read the hearing notice. The Hanson Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on, I'm sorry, I have the wrong one. There's this one. The Hanson Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on June 8th, 2021 at 7 p.m. online via video conference on the application of Morse Engineering Company Incorporated representing Ellis Building and Development Corporation for a special permit under Town of Hanson Zoning Bylaws Section 6A6D and Section 8D3 to allow for the construction of single family detached dwellings within the Agricultural, Resident, uh, Agricultural Recreation District at Zero County Road, Map 74, Lot 7 and 8, Hanson Assessors Map. I have a letter from the Building Commissioner, um, Kerry Glass, and he has reviewed the application and the office has no objections to this proposal, provided that the owner acquires all necessary permits and adheres with the state building codes. Uh, with that being said, um, do we have a representative for Morse Engineering here? Kevin. Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. I got to go to Greg Morse, I'm assuming, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering. Can, um, so I, can you see me right now? I can. Okay. Let's make it short because I, because I'm not sure if he can. All right. Go ahead. Yes. This is Greg Morse. Hi, Mr. Morse. How are you? Good. Good. Good to go. Yep. All, all yours. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, for the record, my name is Gregory Morse. I'm a registered engineer with Morse Engineering. Um, representing the applicant tonight, Ellis Building and Development Corp. The property is located at Zero County Road. It's shown on the assessor's maps as map 74, lots seven and eight. Um, it's approximately 52.6 acres in size. It's previously undeveloped woodland. Um, of that 52.6 acres, um, approximately 21 acres of it is located in the residence AA district. Uh, approximately 31 acres is within the agricultural recreational district. What brings us before you is we're seeking a special permit associated with a residential subdivision at the property. Um, as depicted on the plan here, um, where the cursor is at the top of the page, that's county road running across the sheet. Um, and the proposal is to bring in two new cul-de-sacs uh, those two new cul-de-sacs would provide access to 10 new single family homes. Um, the homes are all located on lots that comply with zoning for both the residence AA and the agricultural recreation district. All of the lots are 40,000 square feet as a minimum size, 36,000 square feet of which would be upland area. Um, they all have 175 feet of frontage. Um, However, that zoning district bisects a number of the lots and two of the lots in particular, lot six and seven have proposed houses within the agricultural recreational district. Your bylaw um, section 6D allows the Zoning Board of Appeals to issue a special permit for a single family home um, in the agricultural recreational district where there are no adverse impacts from the project. Um, we feel that there's no adverse impacts from this project. It is surrounded by uh, essentially developed residential properties on the south side, as well as the west side. Um, immediately abutting us on the east side is a, a vacant piece of residentially zoned land, which then backs up to developed residential land. Um, 
this project has been peer reviewed. It has been before the planning board. We expect a planning board approval uh, later this month. Um, but we're here seeking the special permit in accordance with your bylaw for construction of the houses specifically um, on lot six and seven, which are within the agricultural recreational district. I turn it over to you. Okay, so like you said, in the bylaws, it looks like in the uses permitted, a single family detached dwelling would be allowed if it had A through C in, incorporated into, into it, whether it be an orchard, a nursery, forest, tree farm, farming, horticulture, those type of things. Um, so you're just looking to do, like you said, single family detached dwellings without basically a agricultural use um, incorporated into it, just on a few of the lots that were in that district. Did I get all that? That is correct, yes. Okay. All right. Um, should um, any of the board members have any comments? Mr. Cushing, I see you have your hand raised here. Yep. So, um, so I think, you know, as you said, the characteristics of that area is kind of residential. We know it's zoned agricultural, but you have to come in front of us for um, obviously a special permit um, in order to do what you're trying to uh, do. Um, the, can, you, can you just kind of give us, um, as a board, I guess, um, it looks like a fairly big site. I see a lot of wetlands. Can you kind of give us the ratios, I guess, in terms of um, I, obviously you're, meet, you're obviously you're meeting your uh, upland requirements for uh, the lots. Yes, we are. Yep, yeah, I can I can run through those numbers right now for you. Yes, please. The overall site is fifty two point six acres. Okay, of that fifty two point six acres, twenty one point six acres of that is in the residence AA district. 31 acres is in the agricultural recreation district. Okay. Mm -hmm. The majority of the subdivision um, is located in the residence AA district. Um, with this layout, the total area of land disturbance within the agricultural recreational district is only 2.8 acres okay. of the 31. So 90% of the agricultural recreational district is preserved with this layout. Um, all 10 lots comply with the 40,000 square foot minimum lot size, the 36,000 square foot of upland. You are correct. There is some, there is rather significant wetland resource areas out there. We are not filling any wetland resource areas, um, on, on any of the lots with this proposal. Okay. Yeah. That was kind of my question. So, cause I was looking at that. I can't really see it. I mean, it's hard to see, but, um, it looks like the majority of this is in the residence AA zone. A small portion is in the agricultural. And beyond that, you are meeting your 90% upland requirement. Not that we are conservation, but you are meeting your 90% upland requirement. Am I correct? Correct. All right, that's my only question. Uh, Mr. Pratty? Mr. Buckley, Mr. Pratty, do you have any uh, comments? Um, I don't think I have any comments right now. Uh, I just have one question. Um, according to section six um, in uh, paragraph five, it's maximum total gross coverage. Um, I just wanted to check and see, um, I can't see the lot number. I believe it's lot number eight um, to make sure that if this were to be subdivided, um, being as though that lot would be completely within the agricultural zone, um, that it would, in fact, um, meet the requirement of 10% maximum gross coverage on that lot. So lot eight actually is, is bisected in the houses within the AA district. I think you're referring to lot six. Um, lot six does comply with that 10% requirement. Okay, yes, it was lot six that I was looking at. 
Yeah. Um, and it, it does does meet the 10% coverage. Correct, yes. Okay, that's my only question for this moment. Thank you. I, I did have one quick question. Um, on lot nine, is that lot meeting the frontage requirement 100 foot deep? Lot nine does, yes. It does, okay. I just couldn't tell. It looks like it, it tapers off quite a bit here. It it does. We did have that. Um, we do have that one seventy five at the hundred foot setback. Okay. All right. No, I just I, I I didn't look at the plan with a scale rule or anything. I just <laughs> it looked like it was probably one seventy five right on the money. Um, yeah. The the yeah. scale of this cover page is um, you know one inch equals one hundred and fifty feet. Um, just so that you can see the overall fifty two acre site here. Um, yep. So it's. It's a significant scale. One inch equals one fifty. It does comply. And I see you're not creating any corner corner watts, so you don't have to worry about that. Correct. Um, no, I was this the site that that came in front of us before for a solar application. Do you know? It, yes, it is. And it is. the um, the proponent of that project was unable to um, get a connection. I think to the uh, to the grid. Okay. Yeah, I, I do remember um, the abutters' concerns that they were actually more favorable to residential development when that came in front of us. Um, I do recall a lot of them wishing that it would be residential development rather than a solar array. Um, so hopefully uh, anyone that has to speak that, is a, that are abutters would probably support that, I'm sure. Um, should we open it up to abutters? Is there any abutters that would like to speak. I see Mr. Johnson. Yes. Um, Keith Johnson, 96 County Road. I am a, a butter. Um, we moved here last March um, unaware of any projects. Um, so for the record, I would just like to state that I am not in favor of this project. Okay. Is there a particular reason as to why? Um, there's many reasons. Uh, reason number one, um, as it is right now, we're overwhelmed with water, as is much of Hanson from what I've heard. And water in these houses. Water meaning what? Domestic um, water? A high water table. Okay. Um, and these proposed houses. Um, are all going to be sitting on quite a bit of fill. So they're all going to be raised structures, which is a lot of runoff. Um, right. He just got muted. Hey. Nope, he's still on muted, I believe. Yeah, I'm right here. Um, okay. So I, as it is right now, my sub pump runs twice an hour all year. There's no dry season. Um, and I'm concerned about the amount of water. I've stated it throughout all these um, meetings and, and whatnot. Um, my second concern is the amount of traffic that this project's gonna bring. Um, the amount of fill alone is gonna put these 18 wheelers buzzing by my house um, constantly. And with these 18 wheelers going down into the development is gonna kick up quite a bit of dust um as you see on the, the plan um the access road goes right by my house uh there's i believe a 30 foot setback and then boom there's the um and my house sits my house sits right on the right on the edge of that um i do have two young children so you know dust is a concern for me um i am in construction so i know quite a bit of what goes on and you know the amount of traffic um my third concern is with the already county road speedway that we have, nobody does 40 miles an hour. Um, so I do see quite a bit of accidents happening uh, with my with my access to my driveway included. I'm gonna put more people, more blind spots. Um, I'm gonna see quite a bit of accidents. There's already quite a few accidents that happen at, um, I believe it's East Washington and Holmes and County. Uh, intersection, so that's also a concern of mine. How many of mine. Did we go to one of the solids? 
and wow. nobody said they wanted yeah. a residential. You, whoever that is, can you mute your mic, please? So those are just a few of my concerns. Um, we've made it pretty well known. Uh, my wife did write a letter of concern um, to the planning board mm -hmm. for the record. Um, so I want to make sure that everything is documented. Uh, I felt like, um, you know, when you said everybody was open to residential uh, development here, I haven't run across a single abutter that is in favor for this project. Um, so that is not a fair assessment. Um, I would much, much rather have a solar field, but that's not going to happen. So um, that's all I have for now. Thank you for your time. Okay. Um, Mr. and Mrs. O'Sullivan, would you like to speak? Yes, very much. Hi, I'm Joe O'Sullivan, 625 West Washington Street, but I'm at a butter um, on the other side of the road. I strongly oppose you're granting uh, the request on tonight's meeting. This proposal is for 10 four bedroom homes with above ground septic systems in an area where the perched water table is between 20 and 30 inches below the surface. And the homes are surrounded by wetlands on three sides. The additional hard surfaces, roofs, roads, driveways, and cul-de-sacs will dramatically increase surface runoff. Abutters like me are already experienced increased water on their property and in their basements and are very concerned about the additional runoff and also the needed retention ponds efficacy sitting above a perched water table between 20 and uh, 30 inches below the surface. It's hard to make water run uphill if the bottom of your um, retention pond has to be 24 inches up above um, a water table that's uh, 24 inches below the surface. The wetlands are so, expen so expansive that mitigation may be required from the Conservation Commission to even construct a road to get to the project. The most recent estimate is that 1,700 truckloads of fill will be needed to complete the project. That's 170 truckloads per home. 1,700 truck roads rolling through residential areas in Hanson turn a large part of this town into a de facto construction zone. For the existing residents in Hanson, especially the Abutters, the Abutters, this project is a very bad idea. For all the reasons above, we ask that you deny the request on tonight's agenda. And just uh, parenthetically, I also went to all of the hearings for the um, solar farm, and none of the people testifying in that were in favor of uh, residential versus a solar farm. Thank you. Thanks for what you do every day. Is there any other abutters that would like to speak? I don't see anyone else with their hand up. Hi, excuse me, Kevin. Yes. I've got, I've got two abutters here with me because they never got the email back to link with, is it okay if they speak? It's uh, Bob and Mary and Scott, can they speak? Yep, as long as they don't mind just stating uh, their name and address. I bet they don't. Speak. That would be okay. great. Mary and Scott, 119 Home Street. And I'm, my major concern is of the water problem. You know, we have two sump pumps to keep up with it going. and our front yard is still wet, it hasn't dried out, and we haven't even had that much rain lately. Um, it's just, it's like a flood zone out there, and you build houses up, they're gonna drain more into the existing property. And you want to tell them more? Yeah, I'm Bob, I'm, uh, Bob Scott, 119 Home Street. Uh, if this uh, permit is granted, would, would it have any effect on the uh, conservation issuing any kind of a uh, CR if they so choose? This is this meeting is specifically just to the, the land use of the property. Um, it has nothing to do with the, uh, the planning board meetings for the subdivision of all the land, the road, um, drainage infrastructure, roadways. This has nothing to do with any of that from a design standpoint. 
or calculations. Um, conservation, it has nothing to do with any of that. The, those meetings will still need to move forward and those are separate approvals that they will need to get. Um, so this is really just to um, allow them to construct the single family that they want to do. Um, they have to meet all the other criteria that they would meet. This is really just for a special permit because um, a couple of the lots were in the residential agricultural uh, district. The property is much more suited for agricultural. It would be better for probably cranberry bog, something that requires water. I, I think cranberry bogs aren't really desirable anymore. I, I see. A lot of them <laughs> no, I, 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 I understand bog. your point, but I see yeah. a lot of them around now that have just become overgrown and they're just abandoned. No, but um, that's what the land would be more suited for. Right. No, I, I, uh, I respect all of your concerns. Um, that's really a lot of your concerns are really more of a dis, uh, design concern that really we have no jurisdiction on as the zoning board. It would be the planning board and the conservation commission that would have, you know, jurisdiction on addressing all your concerns. Um, and I'm sure that they've they've had to hire a review engineer that's going to review their stormwater calculations and those type of things, traffic traffic congestion studies. Um, I mean, I I've I've lived in Hanson for 31 years and. Uh, County Road is is a very, very fast road. I, I agree with that. And that's something that, you know, me personally, if I lived there, I would probably take up with, with the police department and see if maybe they can start, um, you know, cracking down on that and see if they can get people to slow down, maybe start writing some tickets over there. But that's something that, you know, could be addressed uh, upon yourselves, you know, to talk to your local police department. Um, as far as some of the drainage concerns, I, I completely respect that. Um, but I think that's something that they're going to have, have to have reviewed by, by a peer review and their calculations that this isn't going to adversely affect your properties. That's all going to have to check out and they're going to have to check the boxes on that. Um, and as far as, you know, the dust control stuff like that, I'm sure that's something that can be enforced during construction. Dust control is, a, is the gentleman that was spoke earlier. He brought up um, that that's something that has to be mitigated on construction projects. So I think a lot of your concerns can can be addressed through the phase of this project, um, but it's not anything really that we have any jurisdiction to do in this case. Um, this is just simply for the use of the of the lot to allow the single families on those particular lots, and nothing to do with the design of it. If that makes any sense to everyone, um, I see I have Mr. Mr. Bouvet, um, if you'd like to speak, go ahead. You're unmuted. Uh, we, we can't hear you. Um, <clears throat> We'll go to uh, the next person here, uh, Kelly O'Donnell. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. This is Kelly O'Donnell, 247 Home Street. I'm a little bit further down the project plan than some of the other direct abutters. I did have a question um, for the board. Yep. And in the prior plan, I can't see it, what's on screen now, but one of the lots retained quite a bit of acreage. It might be lot six that you were referring to earlier. I think it was almost retained 10 acres. And my question, regardless of which lot it is, the lot that retained that significant amount of acreage, someone had mentioned the possibility of further dividing. So my question for this board would be, if you were to grant this special permit, does it convey any rights to that lot that... Uh, survive beyond the scope of this project, such as further subdivision, or would that be classified as one residential lot at 10 acres? Um, which, were we talking about lot four? Is that the one? I can't, so I, I'm having a very hard time seeing it in this new schematic, but on the prior meetings for, before the planning board, it was one of the residential lots. I'm not sure whether it's straddled agricultural, but it was one lot maintains um, a significant amount of acreage. Yep. It sort of was the, the catch-all lot, if you will, beyond sure. the 40,000 uh, square foot uh, minimum for all of the other lots. 
what for how to manage yeah, what, can speak up. Let me see if Mr. Morse could answer that. Yes, yeah, so the lot you're referring to is lot four. Lot four um, has, the exist, has the house at the end of the cul-de-sac and it retains that back land. It's approximately 29 acres in size. The majority of that back land on lot four would be agricultural recreation. Okay. And so the question for the Board of Appeals is, if you were to grant this permit with lot four, um, would you be conveying any additional rights to lot four beyond this permit that, you know, that would allow them to subdivide? Um, I, I don't, I don't believe we can put a condition on a particular lot. Um, but I would say that if someone were to further subdivide lot four or try, they would have to go back in front of the planning board. It's not something that can happen overnight. Thank you. Am I unmuted at this point? Yes, Who, who's speaking? This is Dave Beauvais. If okay. I may take a turn. Yes, yes, go ahead, sir. First of all, thank you for the invitation to this uh, to this hearing. I, uh, I'm Dave Beauvais. My wife, Gloria, and I live at uh, 149 Home Street. We've been uh, in this home for, well, since 1991. Uh, in this location, we are, we are, I guess, adjacent to lot four. Um, during uh, the uh, spring and, and often during summer storms uh, and, uh, and winter storms, you'll see considerable groundwater laying on the ground. Um, it, it drains poorly. It's blue clay um, and hard pan uh, uh, pretty significantly. Most of, the, most of the drainage that does occur from that land flows toward lot four um, and it flows toward a small culvert that crosses Home Street um, uh, down adjacent to the uh, Scotts property. There's a little triangle of property that has a culvert under it. So if if these streets are going in, and this and this drainage is going in, and is that amount of fill going in to support the development of these homes, that groundwater is going to back up. I have two sump pumps in my home. Um, they run frequently. Uh, there's a lot of uh, water that needs to be displaced as a result of runoff from that land. There have been five previous attempts in the time that I've lived here to develop this land in various ways. And I'm wondering, and I understand this is the planning board, but it seems to me at some point uh, the hydraulic and groundwater issues with this site uh, would be recognized and this land would be deemed unbuildable. That's all I have uh, at this time. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, again, these these are uh, questions we can try to get some clarification on from the, the engineer. Um, but these are all things that will, they're all great questions. I respect all, all of your concerns and questions, but they really have um, nothing to do with tonight's hearing. This is really just, like I said, for a special permit for the use of the property, not anything to do with the design or uh, calculations or review or anything like that. Uh, but these are all great questions that I would continue to ask at conservation meetings and planning board meetings that I'm assuming you all have been attending to. Um, looks like I have I'm Elizabeth O'Sullivan and I would like to speak. Okay, go ahead, Mrs. O'Sullivan. 625 West Washington Street. Mm -hmm. When we moved here, we were a dry lot, okay? We had one garbage can that used to raise up if it rained a lot. Um, now we have at least nine ponds in our yard when we get a good rain. So I know everybody sits and says, um, it's not my place or it's not my problem. But um, the conservation, all of them say, if they follow the rules, we have to agree to it. Well, what about the abouters and the people who already live in this town um. who are drowning? Yeah, ma'am. So, uh, I mean, again, like, like I said, this is, this is not our jurisdiction. We cannot enforce I know, but everybody well. says that. 
Right, but it, this is something you should take up a conservation and planning board, all of your concerns. Um, I, I, like I said, I completely respect your concerns, but it's not anything that I can do anything about for you. Okay, thank you. Mrs. O'Donnell, did you have something else? No, I'm good, thank you. Oh, okay, your hand was raised. My hand's still up, sorry. <laughs> That's fine, I just wanted to make sure you didn't have something else. Okay, um, looks like I don't see any butters hands raised. Um, Mr. Cushing, would you like to speak? Yes, I just wanted to, um, I know I know it's uh, 7.32 and we're running a few minutes past um, the time schedule on this, but I just wanted to touch on something really quick before we render a decision either way on this. Um, I understand everyone's concerns. Um, again, like you said, Mr. Perkins, I, this primarily has to do with uh, the use of the project. And I know that all these other concerns with conservation, stormwater planning, traffic engineers, those should be hashed out with the other boards. Um, tonight's hearing is primarily about the use. And I would say that in my opinion, there's only a couple of lots that are actually in the agricultural zone, which would tells me that, um, I don't know, quick math that 80% of these lots are in the AA zone. Is that correct, Mr. Morse? That's correct. Okay, so really what we're rendering a decision on is the other 20% or two lots. Um, to me, it's not out of characteristic with the neighborhood. Um, and to me, I would be in favor of this project. I'm not sure how the rest of the board feels, um, but that's, that's what I have to say. Okay, Mr. Buckley or Mr. Pratty, did you have any further comments or questions for Mr. Morse? Uh, I have no other questions at this time. Um, <clears throat> I don't really have any other questions either. Just a couple of comments. As far as everybody's concerns is obviously reasonable, but you know, like you said, their concerns on something that we can be, that can be taken up with this board. So, um, you know, if anything's to go forward and things like that, it's something that they need to make sure that they do take up with the other boards. And, you know, they just have to understand that as far as our perspective, we have to look at it from a zoning perspective and, and its use. So, and, you know, like, like Billy just said, um, at least 80% of this, it looks like is not agricultural use. So that's pretty much all I have to say. Well, all that said, um, I will entertain a motion to approve the special permit for single family detached dwellings in the residential agricultural district at Zero County Road, map 74, lot seven and eight, Hanson Assessor's map. I, uh, Mr. Cushing, I second that motion. Okay, um, so I, I made the motion, Mr. Cushing second the motion. Um, any discussion on the motion? Mr. Pratty or Mr. Buckley? Nope. Okay. Um, so we will do a roll call vote. Um, Mr. Buckley? Aye. Uh, Mr. Cushing? I'm an aye. And Mr. Perkins, myself, I'm an aye also. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Moss. Um, to, to all the uh, butters that attended this meeting, I, I would strongly suggest that you continue to, to attend um, your planning board meetings and conservation meetings. Um, you all had great, great concerns and questions. And I think a lot of them, um, I think a lot of them can be addressed. And I think, I think they can make things work out for you. Um, so we'll close the, uh, the hearing for Zero County Road. And we will get on to our next meeting for tonight. So this is a continuation from May 11th. And I'll read the... Okay. 
I will read the hearing notice. The Hanson Board of Appeals will hold the public hearing on May 11th, 2021 at 7 p.m. online via video conference on the application of Brian Reese for a special permit under the Town of Hanson Zoning Bylaws Section 6B6D to allow for an apartment to be built into existing structure at 270 High Street Map 49 Lot 29 Hanson Assessors Map. Property is located in a residence A zone. Um, Mr. Reese, do we have you here tonight? Mr. Reese, are you here? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. No, I'm here. Okay. Um, so from our last meeting that we had on this, I know we had questions on what the property was um, prior to you owning it and at the time zoning was adopted. Um, I know you were gonna do some homework on that. Did you, do you have anything to provide us with? I did see your letter. Um, did you have any copies of deeds or anything or could you just give us a quick overview of the deeds and the past history of the property of what yep, we're the, concerned with? I, I really didn't turn up anything relevant in the deeds. And uh, when I got too far back, they just turned into some some really uh, you know cursive writing that I couldn't even read the print. So um, I did uh, take the advice of one of the neighbors that said, talk to Alan Clemens and Brian Clemens. I guess they're lifelong residents of Hanson and they grew up on High Street. And uh, I guess Alan is uh, part of the Historical Society. And he, uh, I had a long conversation with him. And, and as far as he knows, he said, it's always been used as housing for the superintendent and his family. And, uh, and that's what that letter was about. It kind of just gave a brief description and I repeated what um, Alan had told me, but that, that's all I could dig up on. Okay, so, cause all, all I, did you submit something else? Because all I have is the letter, you, the letter that you wrote. I don't have any copies of deeds or any documentation. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, like I said, the deeds really didn't turn up anything that showed anything other than, you know, what it is today. The, the uh, as far as the, the letter that I wrote, anything I'd submit, I mean, I had a conversation with Brian over the phone. I, I talked to Alan through email. I, I don't know what else I could submit. Well, I just mean like any anything like that, if, if any copies of the deeds, it'd be nice for us to look at it. You basically just wrote a letter to us self-certifying that you think it is what it is. I mean, you didn't really give us any proof or anything showing that I I guess I misunderstood. Kevin, I, I thought you told me to look through the deeds and see if I could find out if this was anything other than a single family dwelling. I couldn't find anything that, that made it anything other than a single family dwelling. Well, what, what's that? Let's ask it. So the deed, when you purchased this, you purchased it from Laura Brown. We knew that. Yes. And so where did the Laura Brown acquire the property from? I think she got it from the town. Okay, from the town. Yes. So, so there was a deed from the town to her? Yes. Okay, and what about the deed prior to that? How long has the town owned it? I, I don't have that information, Kevin, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just digging through trying to find anything that showed that it was anything other than a single family dwelling. Right, um, I, I agree with you that this is, this is definitely housing. It was housing, someone was living there. I don't question that. Um, what, what are we questioning, Kevin? That it, that it was a single family dwelling on a separate, that it was on, you know, a single family dwelling on a separate lot. What it was, was an outbuilding that employees of the hospital lived at. More along the lines of, I would classify that more along, along the lines of like a boarding house, a rooming house, um, you know, some type of housing, but not a single family dwelling. In my opinion, it didn't become a single family dwelling until it was subdivided off and sold to Laura Brown and you remodeled it. So, so because it wasn't on its own separate lot, it can't be a single family dwelling? Because the only, the only thing that, that that meets is, in my opinion, is that it, that it predates zoning. The structure predates zoning. And the problem we have is if, if we were to go with what your situation is. That means any structure in the town of Hanson, the predates zoning, we have to give someone a two family, a permit to convert to a two family. Well, if it was a single family dwelling, right? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying any structure. 
I mean, you, you wouldn't, we wouldn't come at you and say, well, this is a barn and we want to convert this, you know, add an apartment to it, right? right I, I'm, well. I'm not sure I understand where you're going with this, Kevin. It says if it's a single family dwelling, and that's clearly what this is, is a single family dwelling, and if it existed at the time that the, the bylaws were adopted, so I guess I'm confused. Okay. Uh, Mr. Perkins, can I speak? This is William. Yeah, Cushing. yeah go ahead, Mr. Cushing. So I guess what he's trying to say, I guess, if I can say it in layman's terms, so you would agree that you have primary uses and you have secondary uses to the primary use. Would you agree with that, sir? Clarify that, please. What, what do you mean secondary uses to so, the primary so, so in other words, if you had, so we, we were talking about bonds and houses, right? Yes. So if you had a house, right? Yes. And you had a secondary use to the primary use, which was the house, and the bond was the accessory use, essentially, right? What I think what Mr. Perkins is saying is the primary use was a hospital, and the secondary use, not the primary use, was housing for the hospital. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Perkins? Exactly. Similar to like what you said. So if you have a single family dwelling and then you have a detached garage, that garage is an accessory use. It's an accessory structure. The house is the primary. And in this case, the hospital was the primary. That was the use of the property. That was an accessory structure. This was that an was, accessory structure. Is that what you're saying? This house? Yes, that it was an, an accessory, accessory structure. structure. That, but what would be the, the primary use of this accessory structure? The primary use of the property was all on one parcel, was it not? But I thought we talked about the primary use of this structure, this dwelling. We're talking about the primary use of the property as a whole. That property was all part of the hospital. It was, correct? Can we agree on that? We can agree on that. Okay, so that, that building that is now a single family dwelling, I agree it is now. So that building was all on one property with a bunch of buildings. It was on with a hospital and it's probably on with the food pantry building and it was subdivided off of that. Can we agree on that? Yes. Okay, so at that point in time, before that was subdivided off a few years ago and someone purchased it, then you remodeled it and, and, and now you own it. So prior to all that, when that was all on one common lot, that was an accessory structure. Someone lived there, I agree. But like you said, it was employees or someone that lived at the hospital I mean, worked at the hospital, associated with the hospital. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. And that's what I asked you to, if it is a single family, show us and we'll agree with you. But from what I know about it, that is an accessory building and an accessory use to what the hospital was. It was subdivided off of the hospital. And that big piece of parcel that um, the hospital building was on, it's been raised since then, but the hospital was there. The other outbuildings were there. There was a bunch of buildings, but all those buildings are all accessory uses to the hospital was the main primary use. So it was not a single family dwelling. It was housing. I 100% agree with you. It was housing. And you can legally convert that building to a single family dwelling because it's an allowed use in that residential district. Like you did. It's a, it's a single family dwelling and it's lawful and it's legal, but it is it was not a single family dwelling that existed at the time zoning was adopted, in my opinion, from what I know about it. It was, it was a housing or some type of outbuilding that was housing prior to zoning, absolutely, but it was not a single family dwelling. So if someone constructed this, the hospital constructed this, let's say as housing for yes. the superintendent and his family. Yes. They didn't build it as you know a, a flower shop. They didn't build it as a barn for the animals. They built it as housing for the, yep. the superintendent and his family, it's not considered a single family dwelling. It's not a multifamily dwelling. It's a single family dwelling. And it's, and it's not a, a department store. It's a, even though the hospital owned it and it was accessory to the hospital building, does it still not make it a single family dwelling? You can't have two primary uses on a property. It was housing for that. I'm not sure what you mean, two primary uses. You, you had the hospital, correct? The hospital would be the primary. You okay, that big for taking care of patients. So yep, this secondary building. Primary, all these other buildings that were on that property are accessory buildings. They're so accessory. it can't be called a single family dwelling. It's just, it falls under accessory and that's the end of it. Is that it? I mean, it that's, can't be a that's, single. That's, that's my opinion on it. And that's what I asked you to, to clarify and show. If, if, if you're so strongly that it's a single family dwelling, we wanted you to go back in the deeds and prove that this was a separate I guess, Kevin, what I'm asking, I guess this is where the confusion is. I'm asking that 
if the hospital owned it, are you saying no matter what, if it just a family lived in it because it was built as a, as a single family, let's call it a unit because we can't call it a dwelling because it's an accessory building. Mm -hmm. If it was built for a single family to live in, are you saying that because the hospital owned it and it was all part of that, no matter what, even if a single family lived in it and it was built for that purpose, that it could never be considered a single family dwelling? That's what I'm asking. I, I don't. I, I personally don't think so, but that's just my opinion. So if a single family lived in it and we prove that, we, we, we still have to figure out like, like even if I tell you, from what Alan told me, that it was just superintendents and their families that lived here. And it went from, let's see what the letter says. I, I had it written but, down. But again, you, you're, saying, you're saying it right there. You're answering your own question that people that worked at the hospital yep. lived there. They lived there. So wouldn't you consider that to be housing for the hospital? Yes, but it or wasn't multifamily housing. It was a single family dwelling, even if the right. hospital owned it. But, used it. And, and I don't have and I don't have a problem with that in that it's a single family now. But what I'm what I'm saying to you, but are you is, saying it wasn't a single family when the hospital owned it? That's what I'm confused. So, How can it be a single family now, but not then? May, Mr. Chairman, my, I mean, Mr. Vice Chair, may, may I interrupt for one second, please? I see. I think there's a disconnect on what he's thinking and what you're saying. What, so, Mr. Perkins, if the zoning was enacted in 1956, right? About around the Hanson. Yep. Had this been subdivided in 1955, right? Yep. You, would agree, you, would, you would agree it would meet the requirement, am I correct? Correct. But the problem is it was subdivided within the past decade. And because of that, it became a primary use within the past after 1956. And that's your argument or your opinion in terms of why you cannot add it, uh, make it a two family. Is that correct? Correct. You understand that, sir? Yeah. So I guess that's why I'm asking Kevin, when he's asking me to go back in the records and prove something, it sounds like even if I prove that it was used as a single family, if the hospital owned it and it wasn't subdivided, then what am I looking for? There's nothing to look for, right? It's, it's game over. You're saying that the hospital owned it, so it's not considered a single family dwelling that can be altered or, or an apartment added to it. It doesn't fall under this bylaw. So I guess, my, I guess that's where the confusion is. Kevin, I don't know what you want me to go back and find. What could I go back and find? Is this, there's nothing going to say the hospital didn't own it. The hospital did own it. Right. What, what, what I'm telling you is what I know about it. I, I haven't gone back and done the homework on this that, that you could have done or should have done or, or anything. I don't know the factual history of this property. I have a hunch of what it is and a little bit knowledge of it. And that's, that's what I believe it is. You could prove me completely wrong. I don't know. And that's why I asked you to, if, if, you're, if you felt so strongly that it's a single family, to go back and, and show me. And then I'm completely on board. But like, like we were talking about, so... Conversion of a single family dwelling existing at the time of adoption of zoning. So it had to be a single family dwelling existing at the time zoning was adopted. So we agreed on that it was, was um, housing in, for the hospital, right? Yes. Okay. So it, it wasn't a single family as a primary use on a lot by itself. Okay, it so was, I guess that's my question. Housing. Kevin, if I was going to go back and do the homework, what is it that I could have brought to you that would have changed your mind about, you know, the existence of the, you know, this, you know, being considered as a single family dwelling at the time. Like, what is it, whether it really exists or not, this information, what information would I have been able to bring to you that it was subdivided before 1956? If you did, yeah, then, then oh, I would. I, I don't believe it was subdivided before 1956. I don't believe it was. Okay. Well, that, that's, again, this is, I'm not here to do the homework for you. Right. That's no, I just didn't job. know what I could bring, what, what I should have brought to you because right. I mean, maybe this is something that if, if, if you feel so strongly about it, maybe you should, you know, get a representative or an attorney or someone, um, you know, it, I, you're asking me questions on, you know, what, what I would do. And no, 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 what, that's not it at all. Even if I got an attorney, what is he going to say? You're just, the facts are, this is what I wanted to clarify. You're telling me that if this was not subdivided before 1956, then it doesn't matter what it was or what it is today. It does, nothing matters. That's end of story. Are you saying it doesn't qualify under this bylaw if it was not subdivided? My, my opinion from what I know about this so far and what you've told me is I don't think that it qualifies. From what I know about it. 
but you okay. could you could provide me with more information that might change my mind i don't know i have no idea what you can dig up and what what is there i have no idea okay uh, and so just just curious kevin before we you know let this go if this you know to consider this as a single family i mean it's just strange that this is a single family today as it stands today mm -hmm. what 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 is the problem now like you're saying that if this was allowed then everybody that had any structure would come and say that now, I mean, that would be a, uh, any structure that would have to be in the same circumstances this house is that all of a sudden, whatever it may have been back then is now a single family. How many houses do you think we have with structures enhancing you think we have that are single family dwellings today that may not have been back then? I mean, it, this is going to be a rare circumstance. I, I agree. This the, Your particular case is a rare, rare circumstance. 100% agree with you. But the issue is, if you don't meet the requirement and we were to give you a permit, this is just my own personal opinion. If you don't meet the requirement, right? And we say you don't meet the requirement. And we say, yeah, it's kind of a rare situation. And we give you the permit. Anyone else that doesn't meet the requirement, we have no grounds for, for issuing a permit if you don't meet the requirement. I, I understand where you're going with this. I, I just don't get... How if it's a single family today and it existed over a hundred years, how it doesn't meet the requirement because, because you think it might not have been a single family. Do you know what I mean? We anyone that approached you on any other address could come to you with the same situation I have. And would you question them on was it a single family back in the day? Do you know what I mean? Back before it, it would it would have if if they showed me that it had a separate deed for that address, where did that address come from? Was that a, an address that that came from the hospital or was that an address that was newly acquired when the, the number that you have for that house address, where did that come from? It came, when I bought it from Laura, that was the address it was when I, when I bought the property. Okay. So, so maybe did it come from the town? Did they, did the town, well, that, like, well, I, I don't know when the town owned it, they owned the whole hospital property, correct? I, I believe this, these are all things that this is, this is all things for you to do your research on, not me. And you can right. show me these things. I, okay. I, I know a little bit of it just from being a resident in town. All right. I, so I, I know a little bit of, of the property, but I'm not going to go back and do all the digging for, you know. Well, for, the digging I did, game. Kevin, the digging I did was to try and find anything that said it was anything other than a single family dwelling. But now I understand you want to know, was this subdivided in 1956? Because the fact that it's not subdivided and it was connected to that other property means it's not eligible is that am i understanding now that means that it was an accessory structure and an accessory use in my opinion in my zoning opinion that that building was an accessory and outbuilding not not a primary building and so it it was it was housing similar to like a boarding house or employee housing or just like at a hospital where where some of the residences live there you know what i mean similar to that idea uh, it's housing i agree it had a kitchen it had bathrooms people live there but it was more it, it was definitely related to him for employees of the hospital. Okay, but, but do we agree it wasn't a multifamily dwelling? I mean, it's got one kitchen, bedrooms and bathrooms. I mean, a multifamily would be separated, right? It would have separate kitchens. I've you never mean, been in it. I have no idea what it was before and after you remodeled it. I have no idea. Okay, I can tell you before and after. There, there was no separate kitchens in here, no separate, you know, living situations. This was a, a you know, it... it I mean, if anything, yeah, you could have rented out rooms with one kitchen. I mean, to me, a multifamily has got multiple kitchens, you know what I mean? Multiple, you know, separate living area, you know what I mean? It, so, it's not like that. But let me ask, so let me ask you this. So so going by what, you, what you're saying and your take on it. So if someone, I believe the food pantry is all part of that property. That is all the town still, right? You know what building I'm talking about? The one that looks? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. So if the town were to subdivide that food pantry off, right? And they were to sell it. That sure. that would be owed a permit to convert to a two family as well. Well, that's clearly not a residence. That's not a that's not a it's not a home. That's not a single family dwelling. Right, but this that, is that, clearly that, this house is clearly a single family dwelling. You're just saying it wasn't sometime in the past, and we don't know that. So, by your opinion, you're saying this was not a single family. We can see today. We can all agree today that this is a single family dwelling. If you walked in it today, if you walked in it the day that I bought it, I could still tell it was a single family dwelling. The way it's set up, kitchen, living room, you know, dining room, living room, bedrooms upstairs. This is a single one kitchen, it's single family home. What you're telling me is that, in your opinion, this house was not a single family dwelling at one point in the past. That, we don't have any facts that say the point that it was not a single family dwelling. So what we're really basing this on is your opinion of it not being. And that's what I meant by anyone could come to you with a single family home enhancing. 
and want the same request that I have. But in your opinion, you'd say, well, it was that a single family dwelling at the time? As far as I know, and anyone else knows, it was, but that, that food pantry clearly is not a single family you know, dwelling. Um, okay. If you, if you came to me, Kevin, and said, I know for a fact that it wasn't, or I have reasons, and these are my reasons why, why was this not a single family dwelling in 1956 and it is today? That's what I don't get. Just because someone else owned it? I, I think we're just going to go in circles here. I gave you my opinion on it. Mr. Uh, Cushing, did you have something? Uh, yes, I do. You know, like you said, uh, Mr. Perkins, I think we are going in circuit, circles, Mr. Reese. And I understand what you're trying to get at, but the fact is, is based on the way the bylaw reads, it was not a primary use residential single family prior to 1956. I think you've already agreed upon that. Am I correct? I'm, I'm only agreeing with what you guys are telling me because I don't know what it was in 1950. Well, I, well you already acknowledge, right, that it was part of a hospital. I in acknowledge that the, the hospital more than likely owned this property. I believe they owned all these buildings, yes. Okay, and then you acknowledge that you know it was subdivided after 1956 to Mr. Perkins, right? You acknowledge that at some point in time it was subdivided off. I, I know, I know, I know it was subdivided off. The town owned it. And then I know that Laura Brown bought it, and then I know that I bought it. That, that's that, all I know. Was that after 1956? That Laura Brown bought it? Yes. What the town did with it before her, I have no idea. So so then again, so if you think there's this proper deed information that you can get that was subdivided before 1956, that's what Mr. Per Perkins was asking you to get. Do you think that's something you can get? I don't think I can because I don't think it was subdivided. I don't know that, but what I'm saying is, I don't understand why the fact that it, be, it being subdivided eliminates this from being a, a single family dwelling. I well, mean, who cares if the hospital owned it or if an individual owned it or if Mrs. You know, Stetson down the street owned it. it? This is clearly a single family dwelling, no matter who owned it. I, I agree. So I think if you don't understand, the best thing you should do is maybe continue this meeting. If you don't want us to make a decision tonight, hire counsel and maybe he can give you some better direction than the board can. But I just feel like we're going around in circles like Mr. Perkins said. So do you want us to continue this so you can hire an attorney maybe to yep. the next meeting? That would be great. Thank you. We'll, we'll continue. But Mr. Perkins, do you agree that we should do that? Yeah. I, if like, like you said, if, if, he can find information that's going to help him. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm just saying based on what I know in my, my gut feeling of what the property was and is, I haven't done homework on it. I haven't dug up old deeds. I have no idea the chain of title on this property. I have no idea this, you know, this isn't something I'm going to do on, on my own time. This is something that if you want, you know, if you want to try for this permit, I would highly suggest you do your due diligence and you show us that and you say, this is what it is. Give us the facts. Don't just, you know, come in and, and tell us and self-certify that this is what it is. We need to see the facts and we need something to put in the folder if we're going to make a decision on this and in support of it. You know, we, we need to see the facts. Okay. And Makes we're sense. not, we're not trying, we're not trying to pick on you or beat you up. It's just, you know, we have to hold everyone to the same standard that this needs to meet the requirements. And if you meet the requirements, great. I have no problem with it, but we need we need you to show us the facts. And if you're not capable of showing us the facts, you should get counsel or someone, as Mr. Cushing said, to do that for you. Okay. Because I, I would I would highly suggest that in this case, if you have to do, you know, title search on it and go back in the chain of title and do these type of things, um, you, you might want to have an attorney do it. Okay. But I mean, that's up to you. I'm not telling you no, what, um, what you Kevin, have to it's, do. It's all I can do because, Kevin, I just don't understand. No matter how far I go back, title search or not, all that's going to show is who owned it. But you're saying if the hospital owned it, it wasn't a single family dwelling. It's that's that's just the, the strange connection that I'm, if, I'm having. If you, trouble with. if you can go back in this property that you bought, what came from a title that always had an address and it always was in you know separate. I I don't we I know don't, it wasn't separate. We know it wasn't separate. It was part of that one lot. So that's what so I'm you, saying. So you're, no so point you're, is so it wasn't you're, separate. It wasn't a single family dwelling. I feel like I don't care what it was part of this building. Is a single family dwelling, but we'll go around a circle. So let's just, let's just end. I there. mean, if you, if, if you want us to make a decision on, we can. I, 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 I definitely don't want you to do that, Kevin, because I, I know where that'll go. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're here to do, we, we, we got to protect the town's interest and we got to do what's right to. for everyone. So yep. if, if, if you're, if you're, 
you know, if you have done, I understand. I understand the studio apartment in my basement is detriment to the town. I, I understand that. You know what I mean? This place sat for 25 years a mess, and I'm going to put a studio apartment in the basement, and and that's that's a problem. You know what I mean? The abutters don't have a problem. I don't understand why you're saying that. You know, we're looking out for the town. What is it that's going to harm the town if I Mr. put a studio Mr. apartment? Mr. Reese, if you want to look at the if the at the town of Hanson zoning bylaw book, it's not an allowed use. The only allowed use <clears> you can have is a second unit would be an in law. Or you can convert a house that was a single family prior to zoning to a two family. Right. Those are the two ways you can do it, or you can be in the flexible overlay. Okay. Th those are those are your options. So I understand your point of that this doesn't affect anyone. And I agree. There's a lot of stuff like that. But we have a bylaw book. If you don't like the bylaws, petition to change them. Okay. I, I fully support that. I have no problem with that. I don't have a problem with your with you even. If you wanted to put an apartment down, I have no problem with it, but it is not allowed. And you're asking us to make this <clears throat> on something. So we need it to be right. It's that no. simple. We can't, okay. we can't issue a permit because, Hey, we like this guy. No, that's need, not it at all. Kevin, it, if I read the bylaw and it says any single family dwelling, which this is clearly what this is, is a single family dwelling that existed at the time. It's a hundred years old. So it did exist. The only one saying that it didn't was you in your opinion. So I guess that's what we're up against here. All right, uh, Mr. Perkins, I want to make a motion to continue this meeting. Um, what's the address, Mr. Perkins? It is 270 High Street. I want to make a motion to continue this hearing at 270 High Street to August 3rd at 7.15 p.m. Um, do I'll I have second, any... I'll second that motion, Bill. Any discussion? None here. All right. Um, all those um, in favor, Kevin? Uh, I'm an aye. Uh, Mr. Buckley? Aye. And Mr. Cushing, I'm an aye. Um, we'll see you uh, August 3rd at 7.15 p.m. And um, hopefully you have, a, have an attorney to represent you to hopefully try to rectify the situation. Thank you for coming in tonight. Thank you. Um, I'll make a motion to close the meeting. I uh, second that motion. Uh, roll call vote. Um, Sean? Aye. Mr. Cushing? Aye. And I'm an aye also. All right. You guys have a good night, right? Thank you.